Okay, let's take a moment and look at a polynomial. Now, the way that this polynomial is set up, we can tell a few things about it just from the numbers that we have here. First of all, that square tells us that we have a parabola, a U shape. Um, from our lessons on translations and reflections, we know that this negative in the front is going to make your parabola flip. That negative in the front is going to make it flip upside down. So we also know from this three that it's going to be a vertical stretch. That means that it's going to make your parabola a little skinnier than normal. This plus five that's inside with the X is going to make your graph go in the opposite direction of what you think. So it says plus five. That means it's going to go to the left five. And the minus seven at the end is going to make it go down seven. Any number that's outside of your parabola is going to make it go in the direction that you see up or down. So if I was to graph this parabola, it would be seven units down. It will be five units to the left. And this is where our vertex will be for our parabola. And know because the negative is in the front that it's going to be flipped and it's going to be a skinnier parabola than normal. So this right here is a rough sketch of what I see in this parabola, in this polynomial. And I can tell all of this just by looking at it. If you were to graph this in a graphing calculator, it would look just like this. And I knew this without doing any type of calculations or anything like that. And I can tell all this information just by looking at the numbers that are presented. Now my vertex is going to be at negative 5, negative 7. I can tell by the picture that my domain is going to be negative infinity to infinity. And then my range is going to be negative infinity up to negative 7 with a bracket. All of this information was created just by looking at the numbers presented. Now, the problem is if I have a polynomial that looks like this, this polynomial, I can't look at it and tell what direction it goes in. Like I can't look at this and say, oh, it's going to go to the left this many. It's going to go up or down this many. You know, I can't tell all that just by looking at it. Like the previous one, because of the way it's set up, I can tell, oh, it's going to shift left or right. It's going to shift up or down. I can tell all that stuff just by looking. But this one I can't. So what if I set it up in the way that the previous problem was set up? There's a form right here. This is like the generic form of the first parabola that we saw. I'm going to make this parabola look like the first one. And that's our goal for this video. So let me look at an easier example. Let's take a look at this one. Like on this one, I can't tell whether it goes up or down, left or right, any of that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to set it up like the first example that we did. The first thing that I'm going to do is group together my variable terms, the terms that have an X in it. So I put the X squared plus 8X in parentheses. I put them together in a little parenthesis house. And I'm going to complete the square with this problem. So my B value is 8. I'm going to take 8 divided by 2 and square it. This is how we complete the square. B over 2 squared. And I got the number 16. So I put the number 16 inside of the house. And I'm going to put the opposite of that number on the outside of the house. So you see on the outside, I put minus 16. Now after this step, I'm going to factor basically. I take the square root of the first, I put the sign of the middle, and then I take the square root of the last number 16, which is 4. And then I regroup the numbers at the end. Negative 5 minus 16 is minus 21. Now, as you see, I can look at this and say, okay, my parabola goes to the left 4 and it goes down 21. I have it set up in the form that I have in the first example. My vertex is going to be negative 4, negative 21. My domain will be negative infinity to infinity. And my range is going to be negative 21, bracket negative 21 to infinity. 
Now, you may not be able to tell this just by looking at it, but if you were to draw a rough sketch of this, you can tell all these things. So we're going to the left four units, and then we're going to go down negative, we're going to go down 21 units. I'm not going to count 21 units, but let's pretend that I went down negative 21, right? So my parabola, my vertex is going to be at negative 4, negative 21, and it's going to be a U shape, concave up. Now you can look at this picture and tell that your domain is negative infinity to infinity and your range is going to be bracket negative 21 to infinity. So let's do this again. So first step, let's group together our families, right? This is another example. Let's group together our uh, variable terms. We're going to put 5x squared in parentheses minus 10x and then the negative 1 stays on the outside. Now the problem inside the parentheses is that the x squared term has a number in the front, that 5. That 5 is a problem. I can't have that there. So what I'm going to do is factor that number out. So if I was to factor that number out, okay, I would factor out a 5 and inside the parentheses is going to be left with x squared minus 2x. Because if I factor out a 5, I got to take a 5 away from both of the terms inside, right? It's kind of like reverse distributive property. Now I can complete the square. Completing the square is b over 2 squared. My b value now is negative 2. I take negative 2 divided by 2 and then I square it. That gives me positive 1. So positive 1 goes in the parentheses. Now, the tricky part is I put a 1 right there, but there's a 5 on the outside of the parentheses. And you know when you distribute that 5, you got to distribute it to everything in the parentheses. So when I put that 1 right there, the 1 needs to be multiplied by the 5. And then that tells you what number to put on the outside. I got to do the opposite of that number. So when I do 1 change the color here. If I do 1 times 5, that's 5. I put minus 5 on the outside. So now let's factor. Take the square root of the first, which is x, the sine of the middle, and then the square root of that last term, which is 1. Then I group together the negative 1 minus 5. That gives me negative 6. My vertex will be 1, negative 6, And then my domain will be negative infinity to infinity. And then my range will be negative 6 to infinity. Again, if you can't see this by looking at the parabola once you have it set up, just draw a rough sketch. Let me draw a sketch real quick. So this is a parabola that goes to the right one and it goes down 6. It's concave up. It's a little skinnier than normal because of the 5 in the front. But now I can look at this and say, okay, I see my vertex is at 1, negative 6, negative infinity to infinity, and then negative 6 to infinity. So looking at another example, um, for this problem, we are going to group together the variable terms, the 5x squared minus 3x. And now if you notice on this one, there is a number in front of your x squared term. There's a 5. So that 5 cannot be there. Okay? So in order to get rid of that 5, we have to factor that 5 out. Now this is kind of confusing because you have to factor out a 5, but you have to factor out a 5 from the 5x squared and the 3x. So when you do that, you're going to end up getting x squared minus... 3 over 5x. Because if you think about when you are factoring something out, you're kind of dividing, right? 5 divided by 5 is 1. 3 divided by 5 is 3 over 5. So just notice that when you factor out your 5, you're going to end up getting a fraction. Now, your b value, because you have to complete the square now, it's b over 2 squared. Your B value is negative 5, or negative 3 over 5, I'm sorry. And you have to divide that by 2 and square it. So you have a fraction within a fraction. 
you have to take negative 3 over 5, divide it by 2, and then you have to square it. So let me take out my calculator and see. This is how you should enter it into your calculator because I know some people don't enter this in the right way and they end up getting the wrong answer. So what I do is I typically take the fraction at the top, negative 3 over 5, close parenthesis, then I divide it by 2. Then I press the enter button. Once you press the enter button, you square it and press enter and then change it to a fraction. You get 9 over 100. I usually do this separately instead of putting it all in there at one time because most times when you put it in there at one time, you end up entering, entering it into the calculator incorrectly. So I get 9 over 100. And so let's not forget this 5 in the front. You have to do 5 times 9 over 100 to figure out what to put on the outside. So if I do 5 times 9 over 100, I'm just going to do times 5 here, you end up getting 9 over 20. So in my formula, my equation here, I have to put minus 9 over 20. Because I added 9 over 100, I have to subtract 9 over 20 on the outside. Now let's factor. So I have the 5 in the front, and I'm going to take the square root of the first term, which is x the sign of the middle, and then do the square root of the last term, which would be 3 over 10. That's the square root of 9 and square root of 100. Now I have to do 7 minus 9 over 20 to figure out what that is going to be. And that will be changes to a fraction. It will be 131 over 20. So plus 131 over 20. And I have completed the problem. Even though it has crazy fractions in it, I can still tell what the vertex is going to be on this problem because of the way it's set up. So your vertex is going to be positive 3 over 10 because you do the opposite of what you see inside the parentheses, and then 131 over 20. You keep the sign of the one on the outside. So that is your vertex and your domain will be negative infinity to infinity because you're always dealing with parabolas here because you have that square, the x squared. Your range is going to start with 131 over uh, 20 and go to infinity because this is a parabola that's concave up. So the very lowest value would be 131 over 20 and it goes up to infinity. Now let's do this last example, just a, another little twist. We're going to start out by grouping together our variable terms, which will be the negative 2x squared plus 5x. Keep that in parentheses and leave the minus 1 on the outside. The negative 2 is a problem. You can't have the negative 2 in front of your x squared. So we have to factor that out. Now, if I factor out a negative 2, that's going to change everything inside the parentheses. If I take out a negative 2, in the parentheses, I'm going to be left with the x squared and then minus 5 over 2 because I take the 5 and I divide it by negative 2. So now let us complete the square. And notice here, if you distribute that negative 2, you can see why you end up getting that fraction in the middle. And notice the sign change here. That's a big thing that students kind of miss. So let's do b over 2 squared. So b over 2 squared, your b value is negative 5 over 2. You have to take negative 5 over 2, you got to divide it by 2, and then you have to square it. So I can't do this in my head. Let's go to our calculator, right? So let's start out by doing parentheses, negative 5 divided by 2, and then divide by 2 again. I get this answer. Now I want to square that answer. So I press the square button, press enter, and now let's change this to a fraction. You end up getting 25 over 16. So that's what I will be putting inside of my parentheses, plus 25 over 16. Now what do I put on the outside? We have to find that out because you have to multiply it by the number that's in the front. I got to do negative 2 times 25 over 16. When I do that, I end up getting, what would this be, negative 25 over 8? 
Yep, negative 25 over 8. So when I multiply those together, I got negative 25 over 8. Remember, you got to put the opposite on the outside. So since I got negative 25 over 8, I have to put positive 25 over 8 on the outside. It has to be the opposite of what you get when you multiply those together. Now let's factor. Square root of the first minus the square root of the last. That will be 5 over 4. Square root of the top, square root of the bottom. Now grouping together the minus 1 plus 25 over 8, that will give me, get this right, let me go back on here, 25 over 8. That gives me 17 over 8. And this will be your completed answer. Now, see if you can find the vertex. The vertex will be the opposite of what you see inside the parentheses. So 5 over 4, positive 5 over 4, and then positive 17 over 8. The sign does not change for the number on the outside. Your domain, always going to be negative infinity to infinity when you're talking about a parabola. Your range. Now, understand you have a parabola now that's concave down. So the very lowest value, you don't have one because it's going to negative infinity. Negative infinity up to 17 over 8. So let me draw it real quick, right? So you have a, a parabola that's going to the right, 5 over 4, and then it's going up 17 over 8, wherever that is. So let's say it's 17 over 8 right here. So your vertex is going to be here, right? It's going to be concave down. Now look at this picture. When you're talking about the range, it goes down, so it's going negative infinity, and the very top of that parabola will be 17 over 8. Hope this helps. I'll see you in the next video.